Well, the skin is an outward reflection of internal health. If you don't have good systemic health, your skin is going to reflect that and look poorly. So that's why we create this concept of beauty inside and out. When that organ doesn't get sufficient blood supply because of a deficiency of nitric oxide, what happens? you lose hydration, you lose collagen, you get fine lines and wrinkles, and you look old. Most skincare and beauty products are designed to mask, to hide the wrinkles, Absolutely. hide the fine lines, yes. hide the age spots and the blemishes. So we thought, well, let's do something different. Let's get to the root cause of So as a biochemist and physiologist, I certainly know what the cell needs to function properly. So we make a topical nitric oxide that overcomes the inability of the blood vessels to make nitric oxide. So if your body can't make it, we do it for you. I like to say we've created a new category in skincare and beauty. It's the first and only topical nitric oxide on the market and it complements anything else you're doing. You start with this. Anything that you apply thereafter, whether it's growth factors or peptides or any moisturizing or hydrating cream, it's just going to work better. Oh, so it helps with absorption into the skin actually, the penetrates. That's the amazing. Term. See, I did not know that. <laughs> Learn something every day. Hi guys, today I have a Dr. Nathan Bryan in the house and he is a specialist in nitric oxide. You know better than anybody else. Please introduce yourself. Well, thanks Jen, it's a great <laughs> pleasure to be with thanks you. Thanks for so, being here. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. So my name is Nathan Bryan. I've been, I'm a nitric oxide biochemist and physiologist. I've been in the nitric oxide field for going on 25 years. And so my whole purpose was to really understand how the human body makes nitric oxide, what goes wrong in people that can't make it, and then how do we fix these underlying problems? Because today we realize nitric oxide is one of the most important molecules produced in the body. Wow. So I have written a list what can help before anybody like watches this video, I'm going to be like, what is nitric oxide? Because just a year ago, I had no clue what the heck is nitric oxide. So it helps with the high blood pressure. You tell me if it's correct, right? Okay. Yeah. So heart attacks, poor circulation, lack of energy, premature aging, cold hands and feet, brain fog, achy joints, high cholesterol, immune dysfunction, and diabetes. Is there anything else that I missed? Erectile dysfunction. Oh! <laughs> Maybe one of the most important. That's the most. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay. What is actually nitric oxide? Actually, we have here his. We're gonna talk about it a little bit later, but we do have his products, nitric oxide. This is a lozenge. Yeah. yeah. And this is it's a topical we make nitric oxide products and really okay. what makes us different is if your body can't make nitric oxide and you have all these conditions you just talked about then we have product technology that does it for you and that's what differentiates our product from anything else on the market we can detect we can quantify we can verify nitric oxide coming off that we do it systemically or internally through an orally disintegrating tablet and then we do it topically in our skincare product called n101 <laughs> I love this. That's why it's he's an here. An so, product. what what is nitric oxide? What why we need this? Like, yeah. what, why our bodies need this? Well, it's a gas that's produced in the body. In fact, so it's a naturally produced molecule. We're not giving something that the body hasn't seen before. But it's a signaling molecule. It tells our blood vessels to relax and dilate, and it modulates inflammation, immune dysfunction, oxidative stress, the hallmarks of every chronic disease. But it improves blood flow and oxygen delivery. Okay. And so when we look at the function of individual organs, tissues, and cells, these cells and tissues have to get sufficient oxygen, they have to get nutrients in order for these cells to do their job. So we, we make nitric oxide when you take this, it dilates the blood vessels, it improves oxygen delivery, it basically uh, inhibits vascular inflammation, the earliest stages of, of aging and the onset and progression of cardiovascular disease, which remains the number one killer of men and women worldwide. So it's really the holy grail in anti-aging. So if we can make nitric oxide, it's the earliest stage in the onset and progression of chronic disease. So you say cardiovascular diseases is the number one killer for men yeah. and women in the United States. Still, despite wow. all the decades and billions of dollars in research, it still remains the number one killer. And for me, that's simply unacceptable because we know what causes cardiovascular disease, we know how to diagnose it, and we know how to fix it. So there's no excuses. The problem is education and awareness. And you made a very good point. You know, just a year ago, you had no idea about nitric oxide and yeah. you're, you're entrenched in a, in a field of aging and anti-aging yeah. and healthy skin. And, people and I'm looking passionate right now about nitric oxide because I know yeah. it works. Yeah. Look at my nails. Look at my nails. I never had such a long nails when I started taking this. I'm like, wow, it's crazy. I, I always had struggled with having like a longer, this is my nails. No, nothing. Like I was like, Man, it works. <laughs> That's right. It makes everything you do work better. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Yeah. At what age, and I know for women and men, nitric oxide actually declines on average? Well, we, if you look at population-based studies, we know that you lose about 10 to 12% of your endothelial function or your ability to make nitric oxide in the blood vessels 
per decade, and that starts you know, late teens, early 20s. And then this 10 to 12% reduction per decade is what really by the time you're 40 or 50 years old, you only have about 50% of the nitric oxide you have when you're younger. So our whole thought process is why do people, why is there an age dependent reduction in nitric oxide production? And if we can prevent that, can we prevent age related disease? Mm -hmm. And so now we know that we can actually reverse that. You know, we have 50, 60 year old people who have the vascular age of a 20 or 30 year old. We have 20 or 30 year olds at a vascular age of a 50, 60 year old. Mm -hmm. So we now know that we can basically uh, regulate nitric oxide production, prevent mm -hmm. the age-related decline, and prevent age-related disease, whether it's you know the aging skin or the aging heart or the aging blood vessels. How nitric oxide affects aging more like towards the skin, um, especially in women, because most of my followers are in their 50s, yeah. 60s, and they care majority of them of course they care about the body and health but they care about you know aging skin aging how that affects well the skin is an outward reflection of internal health yes so if you don't have good systemic health your skin is going to reflect that and look poorly so that's why we create this concept of beauty inside and out so let's get to the basics the skin is an organ yeah. right it's one of the largest organs I like that because you say it's not the largest because you know it's not the largest. Right. Everybody say when they say it's the largest, I'm like me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So when when that organ doesn't get sufficient blood supply because of a deficiency of nitric oxide, then what you lose hydration, yeah. you lose collagen, you get fine lines and wrinkles, and you look old. And then yeah. you start developing age spots, inflammation, acne, blemishes, yeah. the tone, texture, and clarity of the skin gets worse. So our whole thought process was, and you know this because you've been in this business for many years, most skincare and beauty products are designed to mask. Yes. To hide the wrinkles, Absolutely. hide the fine lines, yes. hide the age spots and the blemishes. Yeah. So we thought, well, let's do something different. Let's get to the root cause of this. So as a biochemist and physiologist, I certainly know what the cell needs to pr function properly. So we make a topical nitric oxide that overcomes the inability of the blood vessels to make nitric oxide. So if your body can't make it, we do it for you. Okay. And then what does that mean? Well, we get blood supply and oxygen to the skin. We improve cellular turnover. So we have our own stem cells that actually go and replace dysfunctional cells. So we improve cellular turnover. We get new cells that are deposited and build a new dermis. Mm -hmm. We improve collagen deposition, you improve hydration, fine lines and wrinkles disappear, and the age spots and blemishes go away. And we've got, I think, five published clinical trials using the serum. And Those uh, slides that you show at the biohacking conference, the difference is like yeah. insane. It's, it's yeah. incredible. When I saw them, like, what? Especially for the scars. That's right. I was like, so we, I like to say we've created a new category in skincare and beauty. Yeah. And it's the first and only topical nitric oxide on the market, and it complements anything else you're doing. You know, you have a great line of products. It's not meant to replace yeah. anything, but you start with this. Exactly. So we apply the nitric oxide. We open up the blood vessels. We start perfusing the cells of the dermis. We improve collagen. Now, anything that you apply thereafter, whether it's growth factors or peptides or any moisturizing or hydrating cream, is just going to work better. Oh, so it helps with absorption into the skin, actually the penetrates. That's the amazing. Trend. See, I did not know that. <laughs> Learn something every day. Uh huh. My question is, which nitric oxide blend is the best? Because there are there are more nitric oxide on the market. And sure. yesterday you say that you have that blend, that you have a patent for that, right? Why this one? I will say this is the best because it's you, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Why, well, why this blend that you have is the best? Well, through 25 years of, of research and discovery, we've identified a way that makes nitric oxide. And we do what's called restorative physiology. So we try to recapitulate what the body would normally do. And so we, we created a whole class of, a new class of supplements called nitraceuticals. Mm -hmm. And so these are products that I've uh, patented, I've trademarked and copyrighted so that it's a really a differentiating factor. Mm -hmm. So any product that we bring to market generates nitric oxide gas. And this simple composition of matter that uses uh, really some simple chemistry uh, provides a source of nitric oxide. Where all the other products on the market are giving your body kind of precursors or substrates mm -hmm. and hoping they can convert it to nitric oxide. Yes. But now we understand that the reason people are nitric oxide deficient is they can't convert these products or precursors into nitric oxide. So it's like putting gas in a car with a blown up engine. What we do is we fix the engine and we provide a source of nitric oxide that your body can't make. Mm. Completely different. And why is there um, vitamin C and magnesium? Well, part of what we do is basically generate nitric oxide gas. And so there's some, there's some 
basic, some simple chemistry here. So the vitamin C and the mag ascorbate is to do two things. Number one, we need magnesium for the nitric oxide synthase enzyme. Most Americans are deficient in magnesium, so it's just a supplemental dose. We need to restore the normal function of the enzyme. And then two, when you make nitric oxide, you need to prevent any unwanted chemistry. There's what's called nitrosative chemistry that can form some unwanted uh, metabolites. And so vitamin C prevents any nitrosative chemistry from occurring in that reaction. And then thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, is that vitamin C actually extends the biological half-life of nitric oxide. Oh. So now once we take it or apply it, you basically have an extended release form. And there's a certain ratio of what we're using uh, yeah. there. And it's in both the topical the same and the topical as well. Huh. Yeah, the, fund the science is fundamental to both. What form of vitamin C are you using here? It's, vi it's ascorbic acid. Oh. So we have how, to... How strong is it? Well, it's 20% in the serum. So the, the whole point here is when the, it, there's a difference in pH of both of these. Okay. And there's different components in these. So when you dispense these and mix it together, the final pH is five and a half to six. So we want to mimic normal skin pH. Okay. This is and vitamin the, C and here and this the gas. Is our, well, it's not a gas. When you mix it together, it generates nitric oxide uh, gas. Oh, okay. So it's the combination of those that create the magic. This thing works. I have tried and I just fell in love. I know it works. <laughs> It's, it's amazing. Well, we've got the, you know, the state, the randomized clinical trials, yeah. uh, clinical trials that demonstrate that when you use this, in our auto clinical trials are using this serum twice a day for 30 days. And you know, maybe we'll show some before and afters, but it's really remarkable and transformative results. Cool, I like the info. This is amazing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure all of them are gonna like it. Okay, so how much nitric oxide do we need? Is there a different dose when we age? For, for example, like when you're 35 and 85, is there a different dose that you need? Well, everybody's different. I think our individual demands, metabolic demands are different. So obviously a 20 year old will probably need less than say a 70 or 80 year old. So it's based upon how much nitric oxide your body's normally making, that how much do we have to give to supplement the deficits? I like to say there's two types of people out there. There's people like you and I who are healthy and want to stay healthy and not get sick. And so our requirements for nitric oxide are going to be much different than somebody, let's say, who has cardiovascular disease, erectile dysfunction, diabetes, and high blood pressure. That, those demands are much different than what our demands allow. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, we know how much nitric oxide a normal healthy person makes in 24 hours. And we basically dial that into our products. So with a lozenge, if you're, if you're like us, you're normally healthy and just want to take kind of a preventive or a prophylactic Preventive. daily dose of NO, then one lozenge is sufficient. If you've got someone one, one like a day. one a day. Mm -hmm. And so that lozenge is designed to have a resident time of about five to six minutes. You put it in your mouth, uh, let it dissolve. Don't chew it, don't swallow it, but it's generating nitric oxide gas. I kind of so like one swallow. Is sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> it is really good. Yeah. So let, I have let a friend. Let it slowly dissolve. I have a friend. He's 28 years old. He has a blood clots super young, but he got uh, blood clots, of course, after vaccine. Yeah. How much of this he will should take? You know, we've done a lot of investigations into long COVID and those with vaccine injury that have the increased uh, susceptibility to blood clots. And really in those conditions, because it's the inflammation of the blood vessels mm -hmm. and the activation of the platelets by the spike protein. So we have to downregulate those adhesion molecules. We have to kind of put the brakes on platelet aggregation. So for those, the protocol is usually one lozenge every four to six hours. Mm -hmm. And if the person is taking already the uh, blood thinners, how that will work? You know, there's no contraindications or interactions with any standard medications. We've been doing this for 10 or 15 years and we've never seen an okay. interaction. But I think obviously you should consult with your physician, let them know any new regimen you're going on when you're on any prescription medication. Mm -hmm. The nitric oxide that we deliver is completely safe. It's very effective at doing what nitric oxide does. Great, amazing. What habits reduce nitric oxide? That's big because That's we all have bad habits. That's so I would right. like to know at least like a few, three, four habits that you think, you know, not you think, yeah. you know, that reduces nitric oxide. Some of these aren't bad habits, right? I think people try to do things with good intentions. Is coffee bad? Coffee's not necessarily bad. I mean, caffeine is a vasoconstrictor, right? So it will kind of uh, outcompete the vasodilatory effects of nitric okay. oxide. So everything in moderation. The main things that contribute to loss of nitric oxide are the use of mouthwash. Oh, yeah. this one so is this cool. Is, yeah, this is the this is the jaw dropper here. Yeah, people. that's what I was when I was listening to you when we were at the Bai Hiking Conference. I was like, what? 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 Yeah. <laughs> and this is like the information, well, not from the sky. Like he has done research. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've published and other people have published on this. If you use mouthwash, 
you eradicate the oral microbiome. So the bacteria that live in and on our body are there to do things that we as humans can't do. One of those is provide a source of nitric oxide. So when we indiscriminately kill the microbiome, then we shut down nitric oxide production, blood pressure goes up, we lose the protective benefits of exercise. And all this is explained by a lack of nitric oxide production. Is there any particular ingredient like fluoride or just well, it's fluoride. Any, it's any antiseptic. So it's alcohol-based mouthwash, like okay. uh, Listerine, Scope, all of the antiseptics, chlorhexidine, the, the prescription medication used for uh, chronic halitosis. Mm -hmm. uh, fluoride is an antiseptic, so you have to use toothpaste without any fluoride. Without the fluoride, uh, yes. And fluoride's in our drinking water, it's everywhere, so you, you get to eliminate fluoride. As from ingestion, both through toothpaste and through drinking water, the water we bathe in. So I, I encourage people to get a home filtration system that removes the fluoride, the chlorine, the chloramines, all the bad stuff that's in municipal water. Is coconut oil for mouth like okay? I think so. I mean, the short answer is we don't know. Okay. You know, we've done all the experiments and the studies using antiseptic mouthwash. Uh, we put people on mouthwash for as little as seven days, and you know sometimes we see as much as a 20 millimeter increase in blood pressure. Wow! So this is a, a dramatic effect. Uh, so if, I tell people if you're using mouthwash, you have to stop. Get rid of fluoride, buy fluoride-free toothpaste, and then limit your exposure to fluoride. So if you have a high blood pressure, ditch that mouthwash. That's right. Two <laughs> out of three Americans use mouthwash. Two out of three Americans have an unsafe elevation of blood crazy. pressure. Crazy! It's not. It's not coincidental. That's it's crazy. So what will will you say? Mouthwash, fluoride, toothpaste. What else? Like one more really bad habit. It's antacids. Oh. You know, in the terminal step of nitric oxide production in the body, we need stomach acid to make nitric oxide. And there are over 200 million prescriptions written for antacids every year. And now you can buy these over the counter, things like Prilosec, Prevacid, Nexium. All of these drugs inhibit stomach acid production. They inhibit nitric oxide production. And now we know that people who have been on these antacids for three to five years have a 40% higher incidence of heart attack and stroke. Wow. A study out just two days ago revealed that people who have been on antacids for four to five years have a 30% increase in dementia. And then if you go back 10 or 12 years, <clears throat> we know that these cause increased in bone fractures because you can't absorb certain minerals and nutrients like B vitamins, selenium, chromium, zinc. Yeah. So these drugs are very, very dangerous and they should not be used chronically. In fact, they were never approved by the FDA to use chronic. Wow. So if, you're, if you're on antacids, you have to absolutely get off of them. It's killing people, dementia, heart attacks, strokes, bone fractures, osteoporosis. The list continues. Wow. My sister uses constantly. Yeah. She's no, your body younger. cannot and will not heal if you can't make stomach acid. Wow. This is amazing information. Thank you. So those, I mean, th those are very simple things you can stop doing. Stop using mouthwash, get rid of fluoride, get off antacids. Now your body can actually do what it's designed to do. Yeah. We reflourish and, and repopulate the, the oral flora. We recreate stomach acid production where now endogenous systems are able to do their job and make nitric oxide. Nice. So what will be then habits that helps to like boost, produce nitric oxide? Well, it's the things we've known for hundreds of years. It's a good balanced diet in moderation. Uh, throw in some more green leafy vegetables. Uh, moderate physical exercise mm -hmm. stimulates the production of nitric oxide production. And then, you know, 20 or 30 minutes of sunlight a day. There's certain wavelengths of light that come from the sun that will stimulate and release nitric oxide. Yeah, and no sunglasses. No sunglasses. And no I mean, I think in some in some cases, there's certain wavelengths of light we want to prevent from getting in there. Artificial light, obviously, we want to avoid. But natural sunlight is, it's natural and it's healthy. That's artificial. <laughs> yes. you should be doing this outside. That's why I don't film here too much, these artificial lights. So tell us about your book. Um, you're writing one more, I don't know which one. You already have published a couple of yeah. books. What are, you, what are you writing? Tell me about a little bit about your books. First, second, third, and what you're writing right now. So I've published, I don't know, two or three books prior, both academic medical textbooks and consumer books. This latest book is called The Secret of Nitric Oxide, Bringing Nitric Oxide to Life. Mm. The objective is kind of twofold. It's partly autobiographical because it, it talks about the discoveries we made on how we changed the way we thought about nitric oxide and developing safe and effective nitric oxide product technology. And then second, it's to build awareness and educate the masses on the importance of nitric oxide because you were a perfect example. You're very well informed, but yet you didn't know anything about nitric oxide. Yeah. So my objective is to, in this book, tell the story of nitric oxide and help people, help people to get an understanding of why they need to know about this molecule, if their body's producing it, and then what they can do to restore the production of nitric oxide. Because without nitric oxide, you get advanced aging, increased risk of heart attack, stroke, 
all cause mortality, all age related disease. And if we can fix and restore endogenous de novo production, then the scientific and clinical data tell us that we can at least delay or prevent the onset and progression of chronic disease. Yeah, so many, so many women right now, because I receive messages every day, you know, women asking majority of them struggling with aging. And what I notice right now, more women reach out when they're like, even in their early twenties. Yeah. It's fascinating how, you know, sometimes before it used to be like, you know, when you're 40s, 50s, you start to have fine lines right now. I even see sometimes my friends posting something. My daughter I was looking, Lauren, she posted her daughter. She says 16. I'm like, man, what? she looks <laughs> close to be 30. I'm like, wow. Well, we live in a toxic world and yeah. the things we're exposed to, our daily habits, just it seems like everything we do shuts down nitric oxide production. When you can't get blood flow and oxygen nutrient deliveries to cells of the body, then they become dysfunctional and it's no different in the the skin cells yes and we have to restore blood flow we have to eliminate toxin exposure and then give the body what it needs the body heals itself what would you say right now if someone has a premature aging and watching this video what would you recommend if somebody doesn't know like i didn't know about nitric oxide and you know there is so many things on the market so many skincare products so many vitamin supplements and just people are just lost and nobody is controlling this no, kind of right. part of the of the um, marketing what would you say top three anti-aging habits or products that women and a man yeah. should start doing it well prevent, i think it prevent. goes back to what we discussed already stop doing the things that disrupt nitric oxide production and start doing the things that promote it mm -hmm. so we already mentioned get off mouthwash get rid of fluoride be on antacids get off antacids and then drink you know we have to drink our bodies you know 70 80 percent water we have to drink good clean water so hydration is extremely important most americans are dehydrated at the cellular level so you have to drink good clean uh, mineralized water for hydration mm -hmm. uh, obviously taking a nitric oxide supplement one that actually generates nitric oxide and fixes the ability to make it is certainly a good routine and then just eat a balanced diet in moderation you know what you put in your body is basically how your body is going to respond you put junk in you're going to get junk out so i think we have to you know watch what we eat eat good whole nutritious foods and it's a balanced diet in moderation okay. and i think it, it can be really that simple you made, you made a good point. Consumers are confused. I'm confused. I've been doing this for 25 years and there's so many companies out there marketing so-called nitric oxide products that are absolute junk. And they're either naive and don't know the science of nitric oxide or worse, there's companies out there who are intentionally defrauding and deceiving their customers to try to make a buck. So you can't get nitric oxide from chews or gummies or capsules or so-called beets. You know, there's mm -hmm. not much super about some types of beets out there that are advertising yeah, stuff. So, yeah, so consumer beware, follow the science, and uh, don't get caught up in this deceptive trade practice and marketing by a lot of companies. I have a last question. Okay. If you knew that you will die in one month, what will be your regrets in your life that you didn't do something and what will be that you're very proud of? Like it can be personal life, whatever. Well, you know, I tried to live without regret. You know, because every experience, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, forms us and makes us the person we are today. Mm -hmm. So yeah. neither of us would be the person we are today without our life experiences. Yeah. There's some things I'm certainly not proud of. There's things I could, you know, if I had to redo it again, would I redo it? I don't know, because it would change who I am today. today. So I don't think I have any regrets. You know, obviously spending more time with, with uh, kids and family. You know, I travel a lot. And it's very taxing and demanding. And it's, I think, a good life is a life of balance. We have to balance things. And I haven't been very good at, at balancing my personal and professional life. So I would do a better job at that. But the one thing I would be most proud of is, you know, the scientific community has known the importance of nitric oxide for 30, 40 years. And the Nobel Prize was awarded for it. So we know it's an important fundamental discovery in science and medicine. But the thing I'm most proud of is taking that basic science and trying to bring it to the masses. So we knew that nitric oxide was important, but what I've done in terms of developing nitric oxide active products is one of my most proudest moments because, you know, I get emails, text, phone calls every day from people that we've changed their life. I mean, we've mm -hmm. saved people's lives, we've changed their lives. And for me, there's nothing, there's no greater honor or reward for doing what you do is hearing from people that you've changed their life. I know that feeling. And it's, it's they amazing. say if you've, if you've changed if you've changed one person's life, you've changed the world, and you certainly changed their world. So that would be what I'm I'm proudest of. You know, I'm very passionate about what we're doing. I think what we're doing will change the world, 
Yeah. It'll change the, the way, you know, physicians treat patients for the next several hundred years. And I think once people understand the importance of nitric oxide, then we give them the information and empower the patient to heal themselves. And our objective is if we can make people understand that consumers and patients, then they take care of themselves. Physicians and drugs don't heal people. The body heals people. The body. The people, people heal themselves, provided they have the right information, education, and product technology to do it. It's really that simple. I love it. You guys don't feel it, but I just feel his passion. You're just so passionate about that. Look at the smile. Look important. at the smile. <laughs> That's very really important. What we're doing. Oh, this is so nice. Nice having you here. Where people can find you? I know you have an awesome blog. Uh, where can people find you? On social media, email. Yeah. I have a YouTube channel where I do put off, you know, great interviews like this to get the information out there. I have an educational website at drnathansbryan.com. It's strictly educational. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I do a monthly blog. Get some really um, cool educational, informative videos on there to learn about nitric oxide. My books, you can find me on PubMed, those of you interested in reading you know, scientific peer-reviewed publications. I'm on social media, Instagram, Dr. Nathan S. Bryan, on Twitter, on Dr. Nitric, uh, LinkedIn. I'll put all the information in the yeah. description box. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say for those who are subscribed to our monthly secret box, in one of the months, we are going to have uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a secret I don't usually tell that but i'm telling right now in advance probably it's, it's gonna no be, longer a secret yeah it's no longer a secret probably we're gonna have that and i believe it it works when i saw him when i came to biohacking uh conference i came first day i'm like is that all i'm like what the heck is this because biohacking conference is great for people that don't know like nothing about yeah. you know aging and biohacking your body and and uh health it's great but i i, I will say i'm not a doctor i don't have your knowledge you're just like a man Master of that, but I do have some knowledge. I have read, I reversed many autoimmune disorders that I had. And when I went to his lecture, actually, I wanted to go there, I couldn't. And then John tried to ask Susan, and it's just like, I'm like, I'm not gonna go, it's fine. John's like, no, 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 you, you gotta go, you gotta go. I'm like, fine. And I'm going with this face, my man, I don't want to wait in line, I, I want to be VAP, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I go there, Susan, and she's like, no, stay here. I'm like, see? <laughs> I knew it. In. And then she's like, come, come, come. So, and then I listened to you and my jaw drop about this mouthwash and antiacids. And when you showed the pictures of the scar using this serum yeah. before and after, I was like, man, that information is awesome. It's then just, I did my job. <laughs> you did great your job. Yeah. So I was, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I learned something. So you were the only one person that I learned something new in this entire biohacking conference. Oh, well, that's good. Thank you. I know. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Now, the people, like it's information overload. You go to these events Yeah. and everybody's trying to, you know, convince you this is the latest, greatest life changing technology. And some of it, some of it is, or maybe, but you know, there's some of it out there. There's, there's, there's such quackery yeah. that you have to be you know, very discriminant on what you do because we can spend our entire fortune and time and resources and energy on doing things that really aren't going to move the needle. Yeah. So what we try to do is look for objective, scientifically validated technologies that move the needle on human health. And nitric oxide is certainly foundational for everything we're doing in terms of biohacking. Yeah, since I started taking it, I noticed my skin looks healthier. It's not like that aging backwards immediately, but I feel my skin is healthier. It just plumper. I feel my hair getting stronger, my nails getting stronger. I have way more energy. I don't drink coffee anymore and I still have the same energy. Actually, I have better energy. Yeah. yeah I, one thing, I don't have headaches. I had chronic migraines and anytime I will ask anybody and I even asked Dave when we were in Peru, he's like, are you taking nitric oxide? I'm like, what the Freaking is nitric oxide. Everybody's talking about that. <laughs> well, now you know. Yeah, and I don't have headaches, and I recommend it to so many followers and friends about that. And I, I know it works because it, it helped me. You don't want to have headaches because probably migraine is the worst thing that I have ever experienced. Yeah, it's it's insane pain and it's just like really, really suffering. So I'm, I'm so grateful for that because I don't have migraines anymore. Now we've, we've heard that for many, many years and a migraine is a cerebral vasospasm. So when you restore the, the balance of these vasoactive substances, which nitric oxide is one, then you prevent the vasospasms, you prevent the frequency and severity of migraines. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Gina. Yeah. And I'm going to leave all the information about him down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't. Bye. Bye. <laughs>